Good morning and uh, welcome to a time of devotion together. Um, we've been uh, we've been doing this now for uh, going on three almost three weeks of sharing together each morning from God's Word and taking the, the wonderful encouragement that God's Word has for us that's fresh, that's new every morning. Indeed, it's a new morning, and so God's uh, blessings are, are new for us. I'm going to be reading today from Psalm 32, and uh, it's, it's a reminder of the joy that is ours through the Lord. And that joy, again, like uh, all other things is that the Lord gives us, is new every morning. Now, as you, as you wake up and you look out, the, the sun is coming up on a new day. Not only is it just a, a new day, but, um, but spring is very evident. Uh, I, can, I can hear it. I don't know that, that you can, but I can hear it through the windows. I can hear the, the birds singing. There's a, obviously like a chipmunk calling out there. And then the real noise, you'll hear it maybe from time to time, is a woodpecker who has decided to use a vent stack uh, that comes up through our roof, it's a metal vent stack, as a way to call a mate. So he'll get up there and he'll rattle that vent stack to make a lot of noise uh, so some other bird out there can hear it. Uh, but man, it's loud on the inside of the house when he starts starts at that. So, so I, I, I point that out to say that uh, even though it seems like to us everything has stopped. Uh, no, the everything hasn't stopped. Uh, the, the The world is 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 going on, and our relationships need to continue to go on as we stay connected with one another, and our faith uh, can grow uh, into joy, uh, even even in times like these. Uh, we are reminded of the joy that the Lord gives. So one of the one of the tricks that the enemy uses um, is is he reminds us of how unworthy we are of the Lord's love, how unworthy we are of the Lord's forgiveness. He points out our sin. He reminds us even of sin that's forgiven. He'll bring it to our memory. And in the passage we're going to read today. Um, David is is reminding himself and reminding us of the joy that we should have in in the understanding of God's forgiveness that God completely forgives us. So I want to I want to read the, the text with you and just and just go back at, and look at the the depth of the meaning of the words. So we're looking at at Psalm thirty two. Uh, psalm 32 and i'm just going to read the whole of the psalm so just bear with me psalm 32 how joyful is the one whose transgression is forgiving whose sin is covered how joyful is a person whom the lord does not charge with iniquity and and in whose spirit is no deceit For when i kept silent my bones became brittle, and my groan, I groaned all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was drained in the, as in the summer heat. But then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not conceal my iniquity. And I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone... Who is faithful, pray to you immediately. When great floodwaters come, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You protect me from, from, from trouble. You surround me with joyful shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and show you the way to go with my eye on you. I will give counsel. Do not be like the horse or the mule without understanding that must be controlled with a bit and a bridle or else it will not come near you. Now many pains will come to those who are wicked, but to the one who trusts in the Lord will have faithful love surrounding him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. 
Shout for joy, all you of an upright heart. So here this morning, the, the, the text in the text encourages us to be glad and to be joyful in the Lord. For these things are true to all those who put their faith in Christ. Now let's let's just look at, at, at what the psalmist is saying. Uh, it, it begins with a blessing, really. It is, it's like a beatitude here. How joyful, how blessed, how happy are the ones whose transgressions have been forgiven. I mean, uh, it, it should cause us great joy this morning just to know uh, that God has forgiven our sin. That, and and that he, he even speaks of how, right? He says, our, our sin, our transgressions, well, let me just stop at that word first. The word transgression here, it, it means to, to cross the line, very literally. It means to, to miss the mark. And, and that is the definition of sin. We, we fall short of the glory of God, Romans says. We, we, we are not holy like God is holy. And, and we fall short of that. We, we miss the mark or we cross the line into disobedience. These all describe transgression. These all describe sin against God. But God forgives sin and, and he covers sin. That's the next phrase he says. Uh, how joyful are the ones whose trans transgressions are forg forgiven, whose sin is covered. And that, that speaks of, of how God forgives our sin. He forgives our sin through the covering of our sin. And for those of us who are in Christ, that covering has come through the blood of Jesus Christ. His death on the cross, where he shed his blood in a substitutionary death, meaning he died for us, that becomes the covering of our sin. So that when I repent of my sin, I confess my sin, I repent of my sin, he forgives my sin, and he covers my sin. So that now when... Uh, when I pray, I am literally entering into the very throne room of God. I have been given, and you have been given this uh, this benefit of our salvation. But when we come into God's presence, we're accepted into God's presence, not because we're righteous enough or because we're worthy of it. No, it's because of the blood of Christ. Because we are covered, and, and therefore that covering uh, provides us full access. It's not that it's our righteousness that brings us into God's presence. No, it's Christ's righteousness. And, and when he says at the end of the, the psalm, be glad and joyful and rejoice in the Lord, you righteous ones, all of you of upright heart, he's not talking about your worthiness. No, he's talking about Christ's righteousness. If you're in him, his righteousness is yours. Now, Notice what he says here in verse 2. He says, How joyful is the person whose the Lord has not charged with his iniquity. Here he's talking about justification. That you have, when you come to faith in Christ, when you yield your life to him, he, he covers your sin, but he also justifies you. He, uh, he, he no longer holds you uh, guilty uh, of, of sin. But then this next phrase, does not charge you with iniquity, and in whose spirit is no deceit. Now David is reflecting on his own, his own path towards forgiveness. And you'll remember the time in his life when he sinned through the sin with Bathsheba of, of adultery. Um, he tried to hide that sin, didn't he? Uh, he? He tried to cover it up himself. See, the truth is we cannot cover up our sin. There's no way that we can cover up our sin. Our sin is exposed to God. He knows it. We might hide it from other people or think we're hiding it from other people, but you never hide sin from God. But David tried to do that. And really the next couple of verses is a description of what his life was like when he was trying to cover up, excuse uh, his own sin. He says, For when I kept silent, my bones became brittle, my groaning all the day long, for for day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was drained as in the summer heat. 
I think it was Spurgeon who made the statement that God does not permit his children to sin successfully. Right? David recognized that when, when he was trying to cover up his sin, that God's hand was heavy on him. But notice the change. See, the change is we don't need to stay under the bondage of sin. We don't need to stay under uh, the, the punishment of, of the Lord. For when, verse 5, when I acknowledge my sin to you and did not conceal my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave the guilt of my sin. Now, um, David went through that same, same process. Nathan came in, the prophet came in as David was trying to hide his own sin. And he told the story of the, uh, the man who, um, a poor man who had just one little lamb and how a rich man who had flocks of sheep came and took the poor man's little lamb for his own benefit and for his own use and killed the lamb and, and used it as a, as a, uh, for food for a, for, uh, for a banquet. And David goes, was incensed by this injustice, and and he he declared that judgment, you know, the judgment on this man. And Nathan turned to him and said, "You are the one." And conviction came into David's heart, and and he he confessed his sin. He said, "I have sinned against God." And then God pronounced through the prophet that God has taken away his sin. God wants to forgive us, but we must acknowledge our sin through confession. We must turn from our sin through repentance, and then God does forgive. And friend, there is joy that comes, a new joy that comes with forgiveness. And so David ends up the psalm as he's, he's reminding us of, of the joy that is ours through forgiveness. Uh, he, he says, then let everyone who is faithful pray to you immediately. Right? Don't don't hold back and and asking for forgiveness. Don't don't hang on uh, to the guilt of your sin, but but immediately pray to the Lord. And when you do, not only does the joy of forgiveness come into your life, but the protective hand of the Lord is on you. And oh, how we need that today. Listen, what he says. So the great floodwaters will not reach you, for the Lord becomes your hiding. Place. He protects me from trouble. He surrounds me with joyful shouts of deliverance. Oh, my friend, we, we need God's protecting hand. We need his hiding place. We're not hiding from a virus. We're hiding in the Lord. And, and that's where we need to begin this morning. For there is the joy. And then he, he ends up with that reminder again. Many pains come to those who are wicked. But to the one who trusts in the Lord, they will have faithful love surrounding them. Um, this morning, maybe, maybe you're sheltered up by yourself and you feel alone. Let me remind you today that you're not alone. That the Lord surrounds you. The Lord is with you. And so here is final words. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. You righteous ones, shout for joy, those of you with an upright heart. We have an upright heart and we have righteousness because we have the righteousness of Christ. Live in the joy of his love. Let me pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and we thank you for the opportunity from your word to be reminded that you are with us and all the joy we have because you forgive us. and We need your forgiveness this morning. And so we, we come to you in prayer, we come to you in confession, and we would come to you in repentance. And Lord, surround us uh, with your presence today. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May God richly bless your day.